Button down shirt off as soon as I can. Ooh, I still feel a little choked out by it because that's what that means. Serious business. We are going to jump right into it, guys, because I don't want to beat around the bush. So if you want to stick around for a little bit of what I learned in the news today by putting my thumb on the pulse, please feel free to stick with us for the next 20 to 30 minutes. I hope you enjoy it, guys. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Thumb on the Pulse. This is our first attempt trying to get this started today, so obviously it's going to work perfectly, right? We're going to report on some industry news and some console news and stuff like that that's happened around the uh, internet sphere over the last couple weeks or since the last episode. Some stuff we'll be touching on again from the last episode. Some stuff we'll be talking about for the first time. I know this will be the first time we're talking about this because it recently happened and we haven't talked about it since, but that is AOC's Twitch initiation. She did her first Twitch stream just a little while back. I want to say about a week, week and a half ago. If you're not familiar with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she is a congresswoman. She sits in the House of Representatives. She broke records. She wowed us all and charmed us most. I don't even know if that makes sense. Basically was just trying to promote the idea of the youth voting. But this is the first politician I've ever seen actually use something that is commonplace with youth to their advantage. A lot of politicians talk a big game in that regard, but this one actually did it. Regardless of your political views on this, this is the first politician to really immerse themselves in a youth-based platform and really get a good wholesome message out so regardless of what side of the fence you fall on this was a pretty amazing thing a couple facts i wanted to throw out there aoc's first stream she had over four hundred and thirty thousand people tune in that's pretty dang impressive not to mention the following day the vod of her twitch stream had already received 5 million views. She has 400 plus thousand followers on Twitch already and counting. The impression that she's making and at least getting people to go out there and vote, regardless of which way you're voting, was really inspiring and just something that I wanted to touch base on at the beginning of our stream. With that being said though, we usually start off the Thumb on the Pulse news report with a little bit of console news. We've basically beaten the news to death in regards to Xbox and PlayStation. So we're gonna bring something a little bit different. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about this new console coming out, but it's an old name in the game coming back with a fighting chance. Atari is actually coming out with a brand new modern day next gen console. As you can see in the bottom picture over here, the older model obviously was joysticks, very basic graphics. We're all familiar with the starts of where in-house gaming started, but the picture above is a sleek newer version of that. The price point is roughly about $389.99. I know that seems crazy for an Atari machine, but keep in mind, it does have the compatibility to play 4K video. It is HDMI compatible. It has 100 games preloaded onto the console before you even boot it up, both high-res and low-res games. It's currently in contracts with a company in order to allow its games to be mobilized, meaning just like Xbox and PlayStation has their mobile app that you can download and play, basically mirror your console to your phone. The Atari is in the works of having that same technology. They're supposed to be able to have the ability to add a Microsoft Windows operating system to the Atari, essentially turning your new Atari into a PC. I highly recommend everybody checking out the Atari VCS. I will include a link to it down below. The new Atari is coming about the same time as the new PlayStation 5, so let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think it'll compete? Do you think it even compares? There's no disk drive, so it's all digital. We'll see. Since we did mention Xbox, we might as well talk about the Xbox purchase, rather the Microsoft purchase that just happened. Microsoft purchased Bethesda in a bigger purchase of ZeniMax, which is the parent company to Bethesda, and a lot of different developing companies. The total purchase price was $7.5 billion. Now, with this transaction, a lot of companies were curious as to why Microsoft would spend so much money when they intend on making titles exclusive, because that's kind of been the console war template, if you will, is trying to get as many developers to exclusively release games on your platform. Now, the man that made the purchase, Phil Spencer, was asked a lot of questions in regards to the purchase, and essentially he's going to continue as promised, or as expected to, with less regard to exclusivity on games especially when it comes to 
big Bethesda titles, as you can see a lot of them in the picture right there. One big one that was in question was the Fallout series, Elder Scrolls, a bunch of different titles. And again, the response was essentially that's the least of his concerns right now what they're worried about right now is continuing on the game pass subscription making that better including bethesda titles now and then at that point continuing to maintain a positive relationship with their developers and acquiring more developers so don't think that this is going to be where microsoft ends with this one big purchase of developers it's going to keep going and they're going to keep finding software developers because the idea is they make money off the game pass subscription and provide quality gaming through that they are making hand over fist the dollars that they invested into the Game Pass. At an average, each user spends about $10, accounting for some $5 and $1 limited sign-up bonuses, meaning that annually they're making about a billion dollars on Game Pass alone. The idea is that they make money before they invest in the video game so they can pay the software developers what they deserve up front. I really think, in my opinion, that this acquisition might be really good for some software developers, especially with all of these stories we've been hearing recently about software developers being treated so poorly, the working conditions, and then not being properly compensated once an underdog of a title makes its headway and becomes more popular. A lot of these developers haven't been compensated properly post-production. So I'm really interested to see how big of a story this becomes in the next few months of software development, especially since we might see some fluctuations with COVID happen and see what that, how that affects some of the in-house development. We are going to move on to new games though. We have had some new releases since the last episode and then some new releases that are coming out that we're excited about. So we're going to kind of jump back and forth in the timeline a little bit and let you guys know of some of them that we're super, super excited about. Starting with me, we all know we do sports Sundays every Sunday here. FIFA 21 did come out on October 9th. It's got a lot of new gameplay, a lot of new features, a lot of new additions to the storyline. What I thought was interesting about this story was it is being released on PS4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC, which is fun for EA to have included this title on PCs. However, FIFA 21, not being one of the more popular EA titles in the United States, will be like Madden in the fact that if you purchase FIFA 21 for your Xbox One or your PS4, you will have the opportunity without charge to upgrade to the PS5 or Xbox Series X version when you upgrade your console. The one thing that I did know, releasing it on Switch, it will once again be known as what they've called, I'm assuming the last three or four titles, a Legacy Edition, meaning that it really hasn't been updated that much. In fact, from my research, it looks like FIFA on Switch or on a Nintendo console hasn't really been updated since FIFA 18 for that matter. The only things that have been updated on FIFA for the Nintendo consoles are the kits that the soccer players wear, their uniforms, the squad members. So as trades go on, they obviously switch the squads around and make sure everybody is on the right team. There's no story mode at all in FIFA 21 for Switch. There's no Volta mode on Switch and none of the new gameplay updates or additions have been added since 2018. So that's something that I'd like to keep my eye on because rumor has it there may be a new Nintendo console coming out next year? Year after maybe? A lot of people get grumblies when they hear games are coming out on the Switch because of that 30 frames per second. Not a huge thing for me, but I do understand that it has an effect on gameplay for some people. So again, we'll keep an eye out on that and see what FIFA has to report on or any sports games for that matter with the new coming consoles. Another new game coming out on October or that already came out on October 24th is Pumpkin Jack. I'm a sucker for a good puzzle game. And this one being Halloween, spooky, scary themed, seemed to be all too convenient to not talk about right before Halloween. This one's supposed to be very much akin to the game Maximo, Ghost's Glory. If you guys have played Maximo at all, that was a PS2 game if I remember correctly. It's supposed to be a very challenging, complex game. And this one, with the reviews that I've read thus far, does not intend to be any different. You play as a character named Pumpkin Jack, the pumpkin-headed man you see to my right, going through a 3D platform. The idea is that it's supposed to combine a little bit of RPG-ness as well as just a really fun puzzle game. So if you guys are looking for a new challenging game, Halloween-themed this spooky season, might want to check out uh, Pumpkin Jack. This one over here looked pretty fun. 
Black Ops Cold War. This is the new version of Black Ops that's come out. We had Black Ops 4, I think, was the last one. And now we had just released Black Ops Cold War. Well, really, it's still kind of in that, like, alpha beta mode right now. This new iteration is coming out on November 13th. However, an interesting story about this one. There's a new game mode within Cold War that a lot of people have been hyped about. Me, personally, I've always very much enjoyed the zombie game modes and the zombie effects that Call of Duty initiated way back when and is now has brought back game after game and kind of tweaked and tried to play with it a little bit try to make it better for everybody here's a brief explanation of the new zombie onslaught mode in call of duty black ops players will drop into a location that's derived from various multiplayer maps they'll have full custom loadouts intact but are confined within a barrier that's created by a dark ether orb killing the zombies will charge the orb but if you kill enough zombies the orb will start to move you'll take dark ether damage if you're outside of the orb so if you set up shop within there it's kind of like that battle royale shrinking circle type idea there is a horde mode available and that goal is to just stay alive as long as you can without dying as it gets harder and harder that's pretty typical to the call of duty zombie mode but with this dark ether mode this zombies onslaught mode it does give a secondary option to have a little bit more of a restrictive battle royale type feel so i'm pretty excited to get to play it however I'll only get to play it if I play it on PlayStation 4. If you purchase Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on PlayStation 4, you'll have exclusive access to the zombie onslaught mode until November 21st. Only Sony players will be playing that onslaught mode. We do have a new story added on to the Kingdom Hearts saga. New iteration to the kingdom hearts storyline this is kingdom hearts melody of memory with this new iteration we're getting extended storylines to the existing lore of kingdom hearts but in a very new way this is something that i'm not sure if i'm very excited about or not normally rhythm games aren't necessarily my cup of tea but are definitely a good time killer we'll see i've heard the demos available for this game i may have to try it to give a more educated opinion on this but with kingdom hearts and the addition to the storyline they did release the information that it is strictly a rhythm game we're not talking intermittent storylines there obviously are going to be the traditional square enix cutscenes to further proceed in the storyline but all gameplay is going to be rhythm gameplay. Is that how you say that even? You're going to have buttons to correspond with the rhythm of the music you're listening to. All music is going to be original music from Kingdom Hearts games. As far as I understand, it's going to be all previous Kingdom Hearts games, soundtracks, and situations and scenes will be included in Melody of Memory. So if you're interested, you can pre-order. I believe if you pre-order, you'll get the demo or you might be able to get the demo for free. Otherwise, please comment down below and let me know so I can pick it up and give it a shot. We're getting... A 140 songs, 20 plus playable characters, and the Nintendo Switch version will support up to eight player local multiplayer in its free for all mode. So it does sound like a pretty fun game, especially if you're a big fan of the rhythm type games. I'm still on the fence. Now, this was a new title that I hadn't heard of until my researcher brought it to us. We all know Eternal Foxfire. Zelter. Zelter is a new game that came out October 22nd. This is kind of where we travel back in time a little bit for releases. Zelter is going to be a Stardew Valley type game in the fact where it's going to be heavily focused on like farming and community, but with zombies. This game, it felt a lot like when I read the book Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Um, it's basically just like Stardew Valley and has all the same characteristics that make people love Stardew Valley but with zombies in it. I'm going to try to read this. You'll craft weapons, reinforce your defense, fortifications, scavenge for supplies, and rescue friendly NPCs. Sooner or later, though, the zombie apocalypse will arrive. And then it's time for a fight. If you're a fan of Stardew Valley and you've got a hankering to fight off a zombie horde, check out Zelter. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be checking it out just for the hell of it. We have a few other games to mention. Right? That's what I thought, Thack. I'm really interested in trying that one. A few more new releases that we thought were for honorable mention, or at least to mention that we might touch base on in future episodes as well. Also, having come out on the 22nd of October, Hello Puppets and the Red Lantern game that we had kind of teased about a little bit earlier in a couple other episodes. Those came out on the 22nd. One that's anticipated that still got a couple more days from taping this. It comes out October 29th that a lot of people have been anticipating. I've seen a lot more media and marketing for it lately as well is Watch Dogs Legion. It looks like a very interesting 
cyberpunk grand theft auto feel to it but also graphically inclined and could be a lot of fun i think i've seen other streamers have streamed some of the betas of it before but check out any of those titles the one i'm excited the most about though of the up and coming titles that we haven't talked about yet and i don't think we've touched base on it much on stream at all is the new assassin's creed game if you are looking to play a viking and build viking lore with you and your family and your and your clan assassin's creed valhalla is going to be so good i've been watching some streamers play assassin's creed odyssey and then assassin's creed origins lately i need to get odyssey that one looks so good i don't think i ever played black flag which is a travesty because i know i owned it at one point i just don't know if i ever ended up playing it but assassin's creed valhalla looks leaps and bounds better than any of the other ones beforehand and as far as i understand the last assassin's creed was considered one of the best ever so i'm hoping that this one delivers huge november 10th is when assassin's creed valhalla comes out for purchase we are moving on a little bit more on call of duty just because we felt it was necessary to touch base on both call of duty and warzone since they tend to be a little bit separated they have separate storylines. Call of Duty Warzone recently got an update to reflect the holiday season, just as most shooters did. We played a little bit of Apex's zombie mode on stream, I think it was last week. We have played, what other zombie mode did we play? We've been watching Comic Rome Gaming and Next Incendiary play a little bit of these zombie modes. From what I've seen, I've been really impressed uh, by the additions of jump scares from the bins that you can open up. I don't know if they're called bins. I will play more Apex than I do Call of Duty. Duty. the zombies that you can be after the fact i've seen next incendiary wreck some people as a zombie the gameplay just seems super super intriguing and i'm wondering if it's something that they might keep in it i do know that these battle royales have a tendency to implement new game types and then remove them and only bring them back exclusively in certain situations so it'll be interesting to see if they keep this zombie idea in warzone for a while this is the first ever seasonal event for Warzone, it's called The Haunting of Verdansk. It is all at night. So if you're a Call of Duty fan and you haven't checked up the Zombie Royale Haunting of Verdansk, I highly recommend it. Any of your shooters that you're playing right now, check it out and see if they've got a Halloween update because they've been a lot of fun. Another new game was added to Ghost of Tsushima on October 16th. We did touch base on it a little bit beforehand in preparation for it. Charm of Canine Recruitment is the name of the game. The Canine Recruitment Charm is something that allows you to interact more friendly with the pups that are in Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima was really famous for murdering all of the animals in the game, and not gently, not kindly, not just going about your business and snuffing out a dog or two, but basically having to kill most animals you came in contact with this one gives them a good pet a one that you can positively pet your animals but also lets you be able to pat the spirit dog that you come in contact and then one player can summon the spirit dog during the multiplayer events as well you'll also get a horse with a red mane that you can treat kindly who would have thought so that's kind of a fun story coming out of ghost of tsushima and the additions that it's made to its game Pokemon Sword and Shield got updated earlier this month as well. They added in the Cold DLC Island. The legendary Pokemon that hadn't yet been added to the game have now been implemented and are playable and catchable. Some of them actually even got new forms, so they might be the same old Pokemon from legendary times, but now they look a little bit different to you and I who might be more familiar with them. They've added more storylines, Dynamax adventures, as well as a whole new tournament. So if you've been playing Pokemon Sword and Shield, this month you got a sweet update, or at least allow you to play the game a little bit more. This is where we get to move on to the fun facts. Among Us has been getting a lot of hype lately, not only with the uh, AOC stream, but before that it was an independent game that got a lot of hype because of just how, how fun the game is with friends and how little there is to the actual game itself, and how much of the game relies on the people that play it. Inner Sloth is the development company that created the game. They are considering making the dead players guardian angels, who have the ability to save living players, and may be able to continue finishing tasks after their death. Which, that was a little bit confusing for me from the article, because as it sits now, you already can finish tasks in Among Us after you're dead. 
but I'm wondering if this means they'll expand that to be able to help with some of the emergency tasks. Moving on to Among Us modifications. Some modifications in Among Us, especially modifications to the actual gameplay itself, have been affecting the Among Us servers to the point where it's been announced that Among Us has canceled Among Us 2 in order to put more work and effort into this first title to provide a good, consistent, solid platform to play on to make sure that if they do make it Among Us 2, that it can, it'll actually works, you know, that they can actually keep a consistent server up. Some modifications that have been super popular that we love talking about. There is one modification that you can play Toad from Paper Mario. You can easily add different types of skins like this one to the game as well. And as long as they're not modifying the actual gameplay, so far they've been okayed. You can change asteroids to shoot Pickle Rick. You can replace the swipeable card in game with a subway card. Some of the emergency sounds in game have been swapped with like Team Fortress 2 sounds as well. Looks like some of the people in chat have even saw, seen a Sonic the Hedgehog mod for Among Us. I'm just concerned of how much they're going to be allowed in the future, being that they've had such an effect on the game servers as well as open the door for some hacking that's the last thing we're going to talk about with among us is the hacking that's been going on not only hacking to win the game like there's an imposter hack to make sure you're the imposter all the time there's a boot hack to make sure that if somebody plays too good of an imposter game you get booted from the party the one that i saw that's having the biggest impact are the chat hacks where people are actually hacking into the chat feature in among us and just spamming Twitch sites or spamming YouTube channels or spamming political messages. Those are some of the things that Inner Sloth is working as a team to prevent. They're also going to be adding reporting options and a little bit more hacking monitoring to try to fix the problem. The game Blair Witch is going to get a VR adaptation. So if you are Oculus people or have the capability to do VR, check out Blair Witch because that game definitely got a lot of scares on console versions and just from the streams I've watched. So I'd love to see people play it in VR. I can't wait to get VR for games specifically like this. So hopefully I get scared from horror games like Blair Witch, like Phasmophobia. I can't wait till I get my Oculus. We'll see. We'll see. And then lastly, in fun fact news, which this isn't necessarily fun news, but kind of sad news in the scheme of things. I had mentioned earlier in news reports that I thought this was the year of battle royales. Well, it is, except for one. Amazon had launched a while back their own Battle Royale game called Crucible. It has been officially announced and decided that Amazon is closing all Crucible servers. So if you were a Crucible fan and you wanted to play today, I'm sorry, friend. That ain't happening. Reviews for that game were 45% positive and below a lot of the times. Just not a lot of good things people even the people that love playing the game had things to complain about with the game not only is amazon shutting down all crucible servers but they're also offering full refunds so if you put any money into the game crucible skins or guns or the game itself at all feel free to contact amazon they'll help you out Amazon quote directly from this was, we very much appreciate the way that our fans have rallied around our efforts and we've loved seeing your responses to the changes we've made over the last few months. But ultimately, we didn't see a healthy, sustainable future ahead for Crucible. That about wraps it up for Thumb on the Pulse this week, guys. Thank you so much again for joining me and for being here and for being around to listen to me rattle on about news that you may or may not care about. If you haven't yet, feel free to comment on any of the news that I talked about today. Also, feel free to hit that subscribe button and just a tiny little like button click would be wonderful. Also throw support to the Twitch channel. So check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Y'all, this was Thumb Spasm. I hope you enjoyed listening to all the information that I found when I had my thumb on the pulse. Have a great day.